Last year, Samsung launched a pretty powerful mid-range processor, the Exynos 980, and it was on par with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 765G chipset. But the successor to the Exynos 980, the Exynos 1080 has pretty much leapfrogged whatever Qualcomm is going to offer because it beats the current flagship from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 865 Plus. In my previous video about the Exynos 1080, I said there was no way Samsung would make its mid-range processor outperform the current flagship. Turns out I was wrong. The Exynos 1080 outperforms the Snapdragon 865 Plus and the Exynos 990. Which shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, because the Exynos 990 was a terrible chipset. But what's really impressive is, the Exynos 1080 can actually compete against the Snapdragon 875, which is absolutely crazy. That makes me really excited for the flagship Exynos 2100. So, how did Samsung go from having an unimpressive flagship processor, to having a mid-range processor that performs at flagship level? Well, the Exynos 1080 is an octa-core processor built on Samsung's 5 nanometer EUV fabrication. So it's gonna have really good performance while using less power. It adopts the same configuration that's gonna be on the flagship Exynos 2100. So one prime core, three high performance cores, and four power efficiency cores. But the real power comes from the clock speed. The previous Exynos 980 had the Cortex-A77, but had a much lower clock speed of 2.2 GHz. The Exynos 1080 adopts the new Cortex-A78, which is 20% more powerful and 50% more power efficient compared to the Cortex-A77. And Samsung clocked the prime core at 2.8 GHz, which is flagship level clock speed. And it's not just the prime core. The three high performance cores are also Cortex A78 and are clocked really high at 2.6 GHz, which is absolutely insane. For comparison, the prime core on the Snapdragon 875 is gonna be clocked at 2.84 GHz, while the high performance cores are gonna be 2.42 GHz, which is lower than the high performance cores on the Exynos 1080. But what gives the Snapdragon 875 an advantage is the prime core is gonna be the Cortex-X1, which is about 23% more powerful than the Cortex-A78. But the high performance cores are the Cortex-A78, and are still clocked lower than the ones on the Exynos 1080. It'll be interesting to see how Samsung's flagship Exynos 2100 compares to the Snapdragon 875. I'll make a video on that, so definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss it. The Achilles heel of Samsung's previous processors was the GPU, and even that has been greatly improved. Our Mali G78, which is on the Exynos 1080 and also gonna be on the Exynos 2100, outperforms the Adreno 650 on the Snapdragon 865 by quite a margin. And Ice Universe said the Mali G78 is equivalent to the Adreno 650 on the Snapdragon 875. The G78 on the Exynos 1080 will have 10 cores, while the one on the Exynos 2100 will feature 14 cores. So a little improvement compared to the Exynos 1080. The 1080 can support up to 200 megapixel camera, 4K recording at 60 frames per second, Quad HD up to 90Hz refresh rate, and Full HD up to 144Hz refresh rate, and will also support HDR10 Plus display. It's also gonna have integrated 5G modem that supports both MMWave and sub 6GHz 5G networks. Anyway, let me know what you think about the Exynos 1080 in the comment section below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video, and definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon to get more tech-related videos. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.